Hey everyone, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is Sierra Ryan and I'm the founder of Botterra AI. We're an AI automation agency that builds really awesome chatbot solutions for businesses. And we also help other AI automation agencies have the resources that they need to be successful. Uh, today, I'm gonna be demonstrating to you an e-commerce slash retail chatbot that I have built. Um, I built this demo for one of my favorite e-commerce stores, Gymshark. Um, if you haven't heard of Gymshark, they are a fitness apparel company, um, and I really like their products, so I decided that I should dedicate this demo today to them, and I basically just took the products from their website, put it in an Airtable database, took a bunch of their FAQ documents, uh, jumbled those all together to help build this chatbot. So to start a little bit of the agenda, I'm just going to walk us through the demo here, and then I'll walk us through a little bit of a step-by-step -step for how I built this chatbot. Again, the template is in the description, so if you want to follow along and see actually how I built this, customize this template, you are welcome to do so. Amazing. So let's just jump right into this. Uh, this chatbot has five main functionalities. Uh, there are shop products, which is a product recommendation system utilizing the Airtable API. There's orders and purchases, returns and exchanges, uh, customer service, which is using the Zendesk API, and then we just have general FAQs under something else. Um, so awesome, we're gonna click shop products and this is giving us an opportunity to basically ask the chatbot for a specific type of product and have it spit out things in inventory that it thinks we might like. So I'm gonna say, do you have, oh, do you have shorts? And it's gonna think for seconds in that API request and output four pairs of shorts. And if you were to click on one of these buttons, it would literally send you straight to the URL to go purchase this item right now. And again, just to demonstrate that I didn't pre-fill these or anything, um, I'm gonna say, do you have t-shirts? And uh, it's gonna, again, send that API request and output some pretty cool t-shirts. So yeah. That is the product recommendation aspect of this. Um, this is a pretty complicated system. I'll walk us through this for the most part. Um, but again, for this section, it's good to have a little teeny tiny bit of coding knowledge. But honestly, if you don't, um, you can ask questions in the comments if you get confused. Let's go on to orders and purchases here. Um, and it's going to ask if we are reaching out about an order that we've already placed. The difference between yes and no here is if you press no, it'll just send you to a Zendesk ticket request. And if you press yes, which we'll do here, it's going to ask us what we can help, what it can help us with. And I'm going to click cancel an order. And this gives us an opportunity to click here um, and be sent to their FAQ document that allows you to cancel an order. Um, I basically just took the FAQ document and put it into a little card. If you don't know what that is, I'll walk us through that later on in the video. Awesome. So if we were to click that, it would help us out. We can reset the conversation here and go back to returns and exchanges. This functionality works almost exactly the same. Um, it's basically just going to say, give you a, a link to go return an item, or it'll ask you if you want to talk to an agent directly. Um, and you could say yes here. And it's going to have us submit a ticket. I'm not going to walk us through this right now because we have a whole section of the chatbot that's just for talking to an agent. And that will cover the same section. But this is another option that users have to submit a ticket if they need additional support. Awesome. So now we're going to go over to customer service. And it's basically just an opportunity to submit a ticket to the Zendesk. So I'm going to say my name's Sierra. Sierra at Botterra. Ooh. AI and great in a short sentence. Could you share the issue that you're facing? I'm going to make this a really, really short description and say, I need help. And I'm doing this to demonstrate a little functionality that we added here, which is an error saying you need to make sure that this inquiry is at least 80 characters. Now, why would we do this? Um, partially because it's a little bit unfair to the customer support people to be answering responses like, I need help, please help me. Um, we need to make sure that every inquiry is pretty detailed, detailed enough that the owner of the e-commerce store or the customer support agents actually have enough information to um, help the customer. 
So with that in mind, I'm going to say I need help. I ordered a t-shirt and was sent a size too large. I would like to return it for a refund or exchange it. And this is a pretty good detailed, you know, description of how it would work. And then it's just going to say, hey, thank you for submitting the ticket. Please note that our team receives a high volume request. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. So that ticket was sent and there's actually some things going on behind the scenes. I know in the demo it'll look super simple, but again, there are things going on behind the scenes that are making sure that that Zendesk ticket is sent. And now we're going to go ahead and jump into um, a little bit of a walkthrough of how we built this. Now we're not, not going to go into the like complete nitty gritty aspect of this because otherwise this video would be super duper long. But in the near future, I'll be doing like a full walkthrough tutorial, like building this out completely um, so that you guys can understand more in detail exactly how these things are built. But just for today, we're just going to do a basic walkthrough of how this was built. Awesome. So we're jumping into VoiceFlow. And if I did not mention this before, um, the platform that I use to build this is called VoiceFlow. VoiceFlow, in my opinion, is the best chatbot builder I have used a lot ranging from BotPress to ManyChat to Chatbot.com. Um, basically, every Chatbot Builder that's out there, I have tried, and this one is the best one. So with that in mind, as I mentioned before, you will have access to this template in the description. Um, the link will lead you to my template store, and you will be able to use the discount code, which will make this template $0 completely free. Um, I'll also put that code in the description. Just make sure that when you're checking out, you type in that code, and it'll be completely free. Awesome. So to start, we are on the home page here. Um, we're going to basically introduce um, ourselves and... Um, Right here is the get account information block. Um, for this demo, uh, we didn't really use this functionality just because it would make it a little more complicated than we needed to, but I wanted to add this just in case anyone wanted to retrieve account information. So this will be in the template if you want it. Anyways, um, if account information is found, we're gonna welcome the user by first name. Uh, this is just a little bit of like conversational design, user experience. We wanna welcome them by first name. That's good customer support. If we cannot find an account for this person, we're just going to welcome them to Gymshark. Um, and as I mentioned, here are the five functionalities. Uh, we set these up as like intents so that it's a little bit more organized. And if you press on the FAQ intent here, which we'll start with, be with today, and I'll look through our documentation to answer your question before connecting you to an agent. Um, and a feature that I really want to shout out here is the sentiment analysis. So it's really important to make sure that the users are getting answers that align with how they feel. I would hate to use a customer support chatbot and be like, I really hated this product or this service and have it be like, great, that's amazing to hear. Um, we don't want it to do that. We want it to basically uh, respond appropriately to how the user is feeling. So that's kind of what this prompt is going to do here. You can change this however you need to. And then it's going to respond to the user's question after recognizing how they feel. Then we're going to ask the user, hey, did this answer your question? And if the answer is yes, we're just going to be like, great, send them back to the main menu. If the answer is no, we are going to have them send a Zendesk ticket, which is a component. You can find the Zendesk ticket component down here. Um, if you can see my mouse, uh, this is the steps for the Zendesk ticket component. We'll walk through that a little bit later, but it's always good to ask the user if what you're doing is actually helpful. So that's why we added that block. Um, now let's go into shop products. As I mentioned, this is pretty complicated system and I wanted to give a shout out to Brendan with Inflate Agency. Um, he basically designed this recommendation system that I have been utilizing. Um, I've made my own changes to it a little bit, but he kind of came up with the framework for it. So shout out to him. Again, uh, we're gonna start by asking the user what product they're looking for. Um, and right here, we're checking if they're actually asking for a product recommendation that we can help them with. If the answer is yes, we're gonna flow up into this running the Airtable request area here. 
Um, now this is very, very important. So to start, we're gonna set our Airtable URL. We're gonna set the number of Airtable responses. Then we're gonna have our Airtable formula output here. And then we're gonna create an Airtable query. And then lastly, we're gonna send the get request. Um, I honestly recommend if you are confused by how any of these things work, download the template, look at it, just spend some time looking at it, understanding how it works. And if there's anything that you have questions with, you can put it through like ChatGPT or anything and it'll help explain how things like this work. Uh, the other option is you can leave a question in the comments or ask us questions in our Discord, which will be linked below. Next, um, we're gonna walk into some code snippets here after this get request has been executed. Now, these code snippets are basically converting the Airtable data that we pulled into variables. Once again, this is a pretty like simple set of code, but if you are confused, please leave a comment um, or put it through ChatGPT and ask it to walk you through it. But basically we're setting variables um, that will be used later on in this flow. So if you might not have seen this before, um, we said that the number of Airtable responses we're gonna have is four. And what this code is doing here is basically pulling the product name, price categories of each um, product that the Airtable request came up with and then splitting them up into separate variables. Um, this would be for the first product, this would be the code for the second product, third product, fourth product. Um, and that's basically how we're going to break up each product that it outputs. <clears throat> Once again, if you're confused with any of this code, leave a comment, ask a question, or honestly put it through ChatGPT, ask it to explain it to you really simply, and that'll be a good way to get the information you need. This block right here um, is going to check to make sure that the products came through. So if the name variable of the products that we want is empty, if it's set to zero, that means the products did not come through. Uh, so that means that we didn't get any information that can be utilized. And it's basically going to send us down here to say, hey, uh, we could not find any products that match your request. Could you try again? So that's kind of how that works. However, if the name variable is not set to zero, which means that there are products that the um, code was able to pull from, we're gonna jump into this, which is gonna break up the products and output anywhere between one to four outputs. So let's say that the um, API request could only find two products that match your inquiry. Say you asked for some uh, long sleeve shirts. If it only finds two, it will only output two cards. If it finds four or more, for example, it'll output up to four cards. Um, the reason that we're only doing up to four cards is because we do not want it to output like 20 different cards at once. Um, I feel like that's a little overwhelming, doesn't give a good user experience, and it also takes a pretty long time for it to load. So we're limiting it down to four. Uh, once this process is done, we're going to head right back over to the menu and allow the user to click the buttons again. Now, please recognize that I know this process can be a little bit confusing. Again, honestly, you don't need to fully understand how all of this works. Uh, if you want to, I'll be doing a YouTube video on how exactly all of it works. But really, you don't need to understand how all of it works. You just need to make sure that you're setting your Airtable URL. And then down here, you are setting your API key um, in this block. So really not super complicated, just make sure that you're filling in the information that you need to and it should work just fine. Now on to orders and purchases. These sections will be a little bit shorter and easier to explain because um, as you can see, there are very few blocks. But we're going to start with asking if they are reaching out about an order that they've placed. Um, and if they say yes, we're gonna ask if they wanna check the order status or cancel the order. Um, those are the two most common things that we'll get. So we're going to basically take the documents for those two answers and um, send the users to click on those using cards. You can go in and change what these are called. You can go in and change the URL by just highlighting it and clicking this hyperlink right here and then pasting in whatever hyperlink you want it to go to. Um, 
But that's basically how that works. It's just taking the documentation. If the user presses other, it's just going to have them send a Zendesk ticket, which again, connects to this component, which runs them through a Zendesk ticket. Um, and back to the beginning, we walked through if the user said yes, but if they were to say no, we asked them if they'd like to talk to an agent. And if they say yes, once again, it will have them submit a Zendesk ticket. Now, we're going to go into returns and exchanges really quick just so that you can see this. It literally works exactly the same way. If they press yes for returning an item, um, it'll say, hey, this is the document to return an item. But if you want to talk to an agent, you press yes, and it'll have you send a Zendesk ticket. And with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and walk through the Zendesk ticket section of this chatbot. So we're starting with welcoming the user um and asking what their name is and what their email is now and also what their user issue is now keep in mind you can ask for more or less information um every company takes zendesk tickets differently so some companies might need the name the email the phone number what their company name is what their account number is whereas others only need maybe like a name and an email so you can add blocks to um, account for that then in here, we're going to say, great, in a short sentence, could you share the issue that you are facing? We're going to capture that user reply, and then we're going to send it through an if block. Uh, this if block is basically determining if the user's question is more than 80 characters. And if you remember from earlier in the video, um, we want the questions to be more than 80 characters to ensure that the inquiries are detailed enough for us to help the customer. If it is less than 80 characters, we are just going to have it send back and have the user try again in um, submitting that request and explaining what their issue is. But if it is more than 80 characters, um, we are going to connect to our Zendesk URL um, and then we're going to click raw here uh, so that the formatting of that JSON will be raw. And then we're going to have our API key put right here so you can just delete this um, and put in your API key. But for now, we're just going to leave that blank because I don't want you guys to see my API keys. But that's basically how you would do that. You can go into the Zendesk documentation to see how you can find uh, this post URL and also your API key. Um, then at the end of it, we have a little bit of a like special if statement here that determines if someone's like an enterprise customer or if they're just a regular customer. And basically all this is doing is taking their account information, which we didn't necessarily use for this demo, but if you wanna utilize this functionality, you can. But once again, it will take their account information and determine which response it gives based off of how important that customer is. So if they are an enterprise company, customer say they're spending a lot of money um, using this business say I buy a lot of Gymshark products it's gonna say thank you for submitting your ticket our team will get back to you as soon as possible and if you are just a regular Joe Schmo utilizing the Gymshark website we're gonna basically say hey just note that we get a high volume of requests um, this is basically just saying that hey our enterprise customers get priority over the regular customers um, this is a functionality that you do not need to have. You can just have it respond the same every time, but I kind of like to have this just in case I want to use it later. Awesome. So that is basically the rundown of the entire chatbot. I know that was a lot of information. Again, if you have any questions, go ahead and just send me something in the comments below. Check out our Discord. Um, you can also um, view all of these templates that I have on our website, botterra.ai, under the resources tab. Um, and we have lots of templates that should be in there coming very soon. Again, you will have to use the discount code that I will put in the description below to get free access to this template. Um, again, thank you so much for signing on and watching this video. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Um, and let me know what type of template walkthrough you'd like to see next. Um, we have lots of different templates that we build for things like real estate, online coaches, etc. So if you have any sort of tutorials that you'd like us to make, let us know in the comments and we will definitely look to make some tutorials that are useful for you. 
Um, so yeah, thank you so much.